Hey everyone, after some much appreciated rest and family time in North Pole, we hit the road with only 500 miles separating us from our official starting point, the Arctic Ocean. So why the heck did we decide to drive all the way up here? Other than the beautiful scenery, the Dalton Highway leads to the northernmost point that you can drive in the continental North America, the town of Dead Horse. It then continues on private oil field property for another few miles to Prudhoe Bay. The highway travels 414 miles along the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. There are three small towns along the Dalton Highway, Coldfoot, Wiseman, and Dead Horse. And of course the only places to get gas are Coldfoot and when you finally arrive in Prudhoe Bay. So it's really important to fill up your gas tanks before you go and to make sure you take spare gas tanks with you. The Dalton Highway has a reputation for being a particularly rough road. Leading up to our journey north, we received a lot of advice for how to best prepare for the road conditions, and even a few comments discouraging us from doing the Dalton Highway altogether. But of course, discouraging comments never stop us, so we headed north. Well, it's finally time for us to hit the Dalton Highway, which is the road that goes up to the Arctic Circle. 400 miles stand between me and hopping in the Arctic Ocean. Whoa! Not me. I'm ready. Take me to the Arctic Circle. Let's go. As we were driving on the first day, I couldn't stop looking at the pipeline. I knew the highway went along the pipeline, but I didn't realize how visible it was going to be the entire drive. Even though it's a man-made object, it has a certain kind of beauty when you think about the feat of engineering it is. Well, we've been driving for a couple hours, and guess where? We finally made it! The Arctic Circle! We're not to the ocean yet, but the circle's got to be pretty close, right? After a long day of driving, we coasted on fumes into the small town of Coldfoot for a gas stop. $70.33. Holy moly! And when I went in to pay for the gas, I smelled the most amazing buffet ever. The buffet at the Coldfoot truck stop was a pretty unexpected surprise. It had roasted lamb, fish and chips, a hearty soup, and a yeah. great salad bar. We decided to drive a few more miles before finding the spot we would boondock for the night. Now there are pullovers all over the Dalton Highway, and you're allowed to camp at them unless there's a specific sign saying you can't. We found a really great spot just after a bridge down by a river. It was close to the highway, but it was really beautiful, and honestly, there wasn't much traffic. The next morning, we woke up to finish the drive up to Prudhoe Bay. Shortly after starting the drive, we went over Attigan Pass. Attigan Pass is the highest maintained highway pass in the state of Alaska at just over 4,700 feet. Near the top of the pass, we experienced probably the hardest part of the drive whenever I pulled over to let Mandy take a few pictures and then had a hard time getting going again on the snow and ice. We're at the top of Attigan Pass and it is freezing up here but the views are just beautiful and Rocky is having a grand old time playing in the mud. Arr. Part of the reason we were in a hurry to get north so quickly is because we wanted to avoid any winter conditions on this road. Apparently in the winter it gets so bad that they have to put reflectors on both sides of the road so that the truckers will at least have an idea of where they're driving. After a long day of driving, we finally reached the town of Dead Horse and once again coasted into the gas station on fumes. We made it to Prudhoe Bay, exactly 240 miles from the last gas station, which is exactly how far we were able to make it. $5.60 a gallon, oh my gosh. We have officially driven Rocky the Tab as far north as we can legally go without getting arrested. There's the uh, little access sign that says, don't go any further. We went further to the security gate and were okay, promptly we asked to turn around and go back to town. Oops. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. Well, we've driven as far north as we can drive, but we haven't made it to the ocean yet. In order to do that, we have to take a special shuttle from the Dead Horse Camp. And of course, we can't come up here without going in the ocean, so let's go. Look, they even have towels for when Kendrick jumps in the ocean. Towels won't stop me from shivering. Happy birthday. So, are you ready to jump in the Arctic Ocean? 
I don't know if I'd say I'm ready, but I'll do it. I want to. It's gonna be cool. This girl? The bus tour to the Arctic Ocean isn't particularly scenic. It's all through oil fields and oil rigs, but it's the only way to reach the Arctic Ocean. In a way, it was kind of interesting to see and learn about some of the oil fields, but it also wasn't exactly our cup of tea. When we finally reached the ocean, the bus driver stopped and let us off so we could stick our feet in. Or more. Well, we just made it to the ocean. You can see the tour bus there behind us. They even provided a towel. Are you ready to go, Kendrick? No. We're gonna we're gonna go set up a camera and jump into that ocean. What do you think the temperature is? Into upper 30s. Yeah, probably in the 30s right now. So that's gonna be fun. Can't celebrate a birthday without your favorite whiskey. So we brought a brand new fresh bottle of our favorite Angel NV Rye. Happy birthday, Kendrick. Happy birthday to me. From the moment we decided we were going to the ocean, Kendrick knew he was gonna jump in. I've been in the ocean on the southern tip of South America, so why not the northern tip of North America? You know, there's only one thing that can convince me to do stuff, and that is the fear of regret. I don't know, I think I'm gonna regret not going in, right? So, I don't know, I think we're both gonna have to do this. So Mandy had me go in the water first, and I was potentially going to go under before she came in, but the water was pretty dang cold, so I decided if we're going in this together that I'm not gonna get soaking wet before she gets in. It was really cold, but we took our clothes off as fast as we could and started walking in. Oh, you are, you are awesome. You oh my gosh. Okay, we've got some people helping us film here. I just took my clothes off and I'm so freezing already. This is gonna be like the quickest trip ever. Ready, Kendrick? You gotta run in. After seeing a bunch of rusty barrels in the water, I stopped after about 20 feet and thought that would be far enough to go ahead and dunk our heads. I knew without a doubt that I was gonna go under. So whenever she came in and did the countdown, I really didn't think she was gonna go under. I stayed above water to make sure that she actually went under the water, and she did. And it was such a rush that after I went under, I thought Kendrick went under too, so I immediately started back out of the water. So then I went under a few seconds later. I like going Come here. first. Oh man, what do you think? I totally took my phone in there and forgot to hit record. Or it was too cold and maybe my finger didn't work, I don't know. Well, I stayed above water to watch Mandy go first. Yeah, that jerk made totally me go first. Totally worth it. <laughs> we got our clothes back on. We're having a little bit of a warm up here. And uh, I'm really glad I did it. Yeah, I just can't feel our toes. Yeah. But other than that, everything's not too bad. About five or ten minutes into the bus ride back, I got the feeling back in my toes. And we have the certificate stating that we are official members of the Arctic Ocean Polar Bear Plunge Club, or something like that. After having officially dipped in the Arctic Ocean, we found the only sign we could find that stated we were at the end of the Dalton Highway and took Rocky's picture next to it. Well, the only thing to do at this point was turn around and go the other way. Time to head south, back to the North Pole. Uh, North Pole. That's what I said. We took two days to drive the highway back towards Fairbanks. We stopped at a really beautiful pullover where we boondocked for the night. When we pull over for the night, we often won't unhook the Jeep, but we will get the blocks out to make sure that we're level for the night. We finally made it back having completed the Dalton Highway all in one piece. Maybe a little bigger piece after all the mud. A lot of mud. Like a ton. It was caked on there like cement. Even after shoveling almost $50 into the car wash, I still drove off in frustration with a film of chemical residue left all over the side of the camper and the Jeep. I guess that's the price you pay for adventure though, huh? Yep. Small price. 
we had been really put off almost by some of the negative encouragement we got to drive this highway. But when it was all said and done, it was not near as bad as people said it was going to be. People are always warning us about things we shouldn't try to do. But if we lived by that rule, I mean, we would never do anything. Overall, the Dalton Highway proved to be quite tame. I mean, there were potholes, frost heaves, things like that. But if you take your time and pay attention when you're driving and avoid things, it's pretty easy to drive. If you're looking for proof that sometimes it's more about the journey than the destination, then look no further than the Dalton Highway. Prudhoe Bay itself is a bit of a letdown, but the journey to get there is pretty breathtaking. With that behind us, I have one last thing I want to include in this video. I may have been watching a little too much Man vs. Food lately. I got this crazy idea that it would be super fun to make Kendrick participate in food challenges and share those with you guys. because. I mean, I'm not gonna do it. So I reluctantly agreed and found a challenge in Fairbakes that seemed like I might have a chance. The Brewster's Belly Buster Challenge. I'm here in front of Brewster's in Fairbanks, Alaska, getting ready to do my first ever food challenge. We brought an audience along with us. I've got my aunt and uncle and my cousin Sonia as the cheering cub. Hey! Sign your life away. Oh dear. You gotta sign it. I gotta go take a copy of your ID just in case you do. Die. This was a hamburger made with three one pound patties, plus the buns and all the trimmings, one pound of waffle fries, and then 16 ounces of a beverage. I chose an IPA. That's a lot of food. Alright, so I'm Nathan. I live up in Fairbanks, Alaska. We didn't have a food challenge anywhere in town, so I saw the show Man vs. Food and I created this Belly Buster Brewster Challenge. I wish to do good luck. So when it first came out, my thoughts were, wow, that's a lot of food. Then, after the first bite of the burger, I thought, wow, that's a lot of really good food, because it was delicious. Pretty amazing. And I started out pretty strong. But then, about 20-30 minutes into it, it slowed down quite a bit. Eventually I got to the point where I just felt full. Like, I couldn't fit any more food inside of my body. But I kept going. So about halfway through the second burger is when I had a pretty good idea. I just wasn't going to be able to finish it all. After my hour time limit was up, I curled up in a ball and admitted to beat. But I still finished two-thirds of the burger, all of the fries, and all of my beer. August 11, man versus food, food one. <laughs> <laughs> food one. We've had a pretty amazing start to our journey, and we can't wait to see more of Alaska. As always, you can get links to the interesting places we visited and things we did in the full write-up of our blog on our website, roamingwithrocky.com. And so, with a belly full of burgers, it's on to Denali. Here's to exploring more of the last frontier. Love and light. So, with a belly for... Fricka burgers. Fricka burgers. Fricka burgers. <laughs>